and we are live on tonight's episode of this and that with denise jordan oh uh, well i guess i should say on tonight's episode of the traditional homemaker live q a and i am denise jordan we are going to talk about a few well, I'm going to respond to some of your questions and to some of your comments. And I think this will be a fun show. So I hope you can really sit back, kick back, and let's get ready to get, to get into it. But before we get started, let me just say that this episode of Traditional Homemaker Live Q&A is sponsored by apron diva pretty and practical we believe that an apron is a homemaker's best accessory and just in time for christmas we are hosting a 70 a um free shipping for if you spend 75 dollars or more so we get free shipping for that and then we've also got a really pretty christmas apron in so be sure to visit our sponsor at www.aprondiva.com. So there's that. And I just thought it would be fun tonight to talk about some of the things that we've been talking about, but just kind of summarize them just a little bit. And then to answer some of the questions that you guys have put in some of the videos. And we'll go from there. So before we get started into that, let me go ahead and say hello to a few people that have joined us tonight. So we've got, oh, excuse me, we've got Khadija from Her Healthy Home. She says she's here and she is ready. And we've got my friend Fancy Schmancy who is saying good evening. I just love that name, Fancy Schmancy. It is just so cute. And then we've got Bradford Holm who's saying hello. Mary Cleveland, Mary, it is always nice to have you here as well. And then my sister from another mystery is Cal's Talk. Cal, it's good to have you here as well. And then Concerned Parent, you should have been here on the day when we talked about the three bites and that kind of thing. I got a comment that I'm going to address from that, but you probably would have got a kick out of that one. And then uh, Mary's Life Journey is here. Hey, Mary. And then Forever May May. It is good to have you with us as well. And then Sunsets on the Gulf are amazing. I will just bet they are. So thank you for joining uh, us tonight as well. So I'm going to go ahead. Well, and for those of you who jump in on the replay, thank you for joining us as well. If there's any comments or questions that you have, leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to them. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the uh, answering the questions that I've kind of pulled out for you. And it really was a lot of fun looking at all the different comments. It really was. Hey, Margaret Schaefer, good to have you with us as well. Oh, yes, Cal is saying give us give me a thumbs up. So if I could get a thumbs up from everybody that's on, as well as maybe a like. And if you get value from tonight's video or episode, then be sure to hit the like button as well. So what I tried to do, well, I tried to put all the questions on a Word document and then be able to kind of pull up the document as I went along. Well, that didn't work out, which shows, which is why I was just a little bit discombobulated when I got started. So what I did was I ended up putting most of the questions in a banner and then I kind of abbreviated them a little bit. And so we'll do it that way. And hey, uh, Tommy's Hoodstead Garden from South Carolina. What's my go-to meal when it's just too hot to cook? A salad. Tommy, when it's too hot to cook, I am making a nice salad with lots of leafy greens, particularly cucumbers and tomatoes and some nice cool salad dressing. Yes, when it's too hot to cook, that's what you got to go with. So there's that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Very summary. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and get started with the uh, with the questions. And I have put them on banners is what I have done. And um, it should be easy enough for me to work through them that way. So the first comment that I wanted to make was from Bridget Cram. And the first few comments are from my video. Say yes to the house dress. Who 
knew it would generate so much conversation. And most of it was very, very interesting. So most of the questions or comments come from that particular video. So I thought it'd be a good way to address it this way because I figured if they had those questions, you did too. So that's how I decided to address them. I will go in and answer them as well, but also I'm going to answer you guys here too. So. So Bridget Cram said, I love your dresses. I'm wearing more dresses as well because they are just so comfortable. And Bridget, I have to agree with you. Dresses are just so comfortable. And some days when it's really, really hot, you know, with your dress, it's loose, it's flowy. You can get the air going through it. So air going through it. So they can certainly be a lot cooler sometimes than a pair of jeans. So there's that. So they are much more comfortable. And then my friend at Simple Southern Reflections, and I think that's Thelma, it's either Thelma or Charlotte, says that my dresses are all pretty and practical. Yes. And that's what I want them to be. I want them to be pretty as well as practical. And a lot of people are commenting that they really like the video. Now, this is the video that they are referring to, let me just share the screen and bring that up for you real quick, just so that you know, in case you're, you've missed it, you can see what video it is that I'm talking about. And it is this one here where I say yes to the house dress. And in this particular video, I show you me wearing several different dresses. But one of the things that I talk about is why I say yes to the house dress much more often. And there is a episode, a, a little clip here where I show me bending over, putting something in the washer or trying to get it out and then kind of bending over the oven as well. And when I talked about the rude comments that I have gotten um, from um, men, kind of had to do with, you know, when women bend over and you kind of, you know, you, you're looking at the backside, that kind of thing. So that's what's more encouraged me to be more modest, shall I say? Not necessarily modest, but I also say private because, you know, I just didn't like some of the annoying comments that I got in that regard. And in the video here where I've got the jeans on, the other thing is I am much slimmer then than I am now. And I'm like, oh, you know, that backside view is not near as, you know, um, uh, pretty, I should say, as it might have been at one point. So that's what I was talking about. And then also in this video, you can see where I wear some of my different dresses. This is one of my favorites right here. And the reason why I like these fit and flare dresses is like when you turn around, you know, you've, you're pretty well covered, your hips are covered, that kind of thing. So, and I like the length of these dresses. So now I'm going to stop sharing this and come on back over to you guys. And um, so here's the thing. So um, we were looking at Simple Southern Reflections comment that she really likes them, that they're pretty and practical, and she really enjoyed the video. And then my friend Mary at Mary's Nest also left a comment, and she said that she had fallen into the terrible trap of just wearing jeans and the same style of shirt almost every day. And that's the thing. You know, that's something that can happen. We can just kind of get up and just put on the same thing every day and not really think about being more presentable. Not that a jean and shirt is not presentable because of course it is, but if you wanted to step it up a notch or a little bit like that, a dress is certainly an option or a skirt. And I find that when you put on a dress, you don't have to worry about what to pair it with other than which apron you're gonna wear. You don't have to worry about trying to match it because it's just one piece. And it, that's where we are right there. So now let me come over here and see what you guys are saying in the comments, if anyone's commenting on there. So yes, okay, so Simple Southern Reflections is Thelma. I was right on that. And uh, so Tommy is asking, where do I find the traditional homemaker dresses? She loves the ones that fluff out. And uh, I'm gonna come to that in just a bit, Tommy, so I'm not gonna answer it right now, but I will be coming to that. And um, 
Khadija says she really liked it. She enjoys my clothing videos. And Khadija, if there's time, maybe you can jump on and you can talk about like your modest dresses and that kind of thing as well. Not sure if we'll have time for that or not, but we'll see. But if so, I'd like to do that. <laughs> Girl, be quiet. <laughs> All right. So those were some of the questions or comments. So, no, or so comments so far. So the other question that Mary had about uh, falling into the trap of wearing jeans and the same shirt is that, well, it, it kind of indicated that sometimes she just wanted to do something a little bit different and that she struggled with being able to find dresses that looks good on her with the kind of shoes that she needs to wear because she has some trouble with her feet. She's had a couple foot surgeries and different things like that. So shoes are a huge issue for her right now and comfort. So one of the things that I suggested to her was to find a nice pair of flat walking shoes in a neutral color. And when I say a neutral color, like a tan or a taupe, if you think about it, but if you've ever watched a beauty pageant, most of the ladies in the beauty pageant all, almost always wear a taupe or flesh colored shoe so that the shoes just kind of blend in and you don't notice them a lot on the runway. They just kind of blend in. So I suggested that she might consider getting a pair of taupe or flesh colored like sketchers or something like that. Something is flat, uh, but that feels comfortable to her feet that she could wear with the dress. Cause, and, and really today, a pair of kids or something like that, those will go with a mid-calf dress nicely. So there's that. Um, and let's see. Oh, and then she had the funniest story that she told about um, um, uh, her and her friend were out at lunch and some men at another table kept staring at her friend. And finally, her friend just turned around and said, OK, get a good look. And then the men were embarrassed. And I thought I would never be that bold. But that was just so funny when Mary shared that. And these comments are in the comment section of uh, the Say Yes to the House Dress video. So you can find those a little bit later on. So now one of the other questions that I got quite a bit. And Tommy, I'm coming to your question. And it was, did, did I make any of the dresses? She says she's about a 1X and she just can't find dresses like that anymore because most of them are way too short. And I have to agree with you, Anne, many times when you're out shopping today, particularly today, the dresses are just so short. Now, they're not too short for women who are younger, but I just feel like I'm of a certain age. I'm somebody's grandmother. I just don't feel comfortable wearing dresses as short as the ones that you now find out shopping, unless I'm at the beach or just kind of wear something around the house. And then I also got the same or a similar question from Bargain Searcher. And she says, I love your dresses, but can't find decent styles for myself. Where do you get yours from? And then Linda Barrett, who said, I love this video. I've also been wearing more dresses. Would you mind sharing where you have found such a variety <clears throat> excuse me, where you found such a variety, you found such a variety of well-made dresses. So most of the dresses that I wore in, in this video and in most of the videos that I have, I got from Amazon. And I will back up just for a second. I'll go back to the dress video and we will look at some of those. So I'm going to go over here to share the screen and share the screen, share again. and share again. And this dress, which is one of my favorite dresses right here, this dress I got on Amazon. And I'll find the links and put them in the in this video. I thought I had was going to be able to get that done, but I didn't have it done yet. This dress here, I also got from Amazon and actually it is probably the same vendor and it's the same style dress. You notice they both got the Peter Pan collar. They're both kind of snug in the bodice and then they flare out over the hips. So, you know, that's one that I got from Amazon. And then, um, this, wait a minute. Yeah. Now this dress I got from TJ Maxx. 
And um, TJ Maxx has a lovely collection of dresses. And this is the one that I was going to discard and put in the Goodwill pile and took back out. Um, that one I got from TJ Maxx. And then this one, which is one of my favorites, I got at Macy's. And I think it's a Ralph Lauren dress because he's got a lot of the dresses in this same style that are uh, they're like a simple sheath with kind of a scoop net and um the only thing about this one is that since it is a simple sheath you can kind of see that you know it's a sheath in the back and so it's not as modest as i would prefer when i'm putting something in the oven and you have to see me from the back but it's really a very nice dress it's not too snug and i got that one at macy's um this one and i'm limping along because i had dropped a bag of frozen peas on my uh, foot i got this dress on amazon and it's um it's actually a one-piece dress but you've got a top that looks like a blouse with a tie and then it's got a different color skirt and then this is the same dress only the tie is not on it but you know but you've got the i should take it back it's the same dress as the red one and the houndstooth one because you've got the uh, Peter Pan collar and you've got the little band at the waist and then you've got a fit and flare over the hips. So this one I got at um, Target. Yeah, this one I got at Target. It was very inexpensive. It's Universal Threads. It was less than $30. And I had actually seen Inspired by Nikki wearing it. And she looked so pretty in it. I thought, let me see if I can find that and see how it'll look on me. Well, it looks okay. Now, I don't look as pretty in it as Nikki does. But it does work out just fine. And I like the different little details on it. And it reminds me of one that my grandma used to have. And as you can see, you know, it works out well when I'm doing whatever it it's a good length. I can stoop, squat. This one I got at Ross's. And it's the one that was just a little bit too short. But, you know, and it, again, it was less than $25. And let's see. Now, these, I've got four of them in the same color. And they came from Amazon. And these are like the big T-shirt styles. So I've got this copper colored one, which I show you there. And it's Empire Waste is very, like I said, less than $25 or at least less than $30 in a bunch of different colors. And it's so serviceable. Like I can just throw these in the wash, get them out and they're fine. Now this one, Tommy, I'm going to back up for a second. Where is it? There we go. So these are the ones that I like to wear when I'm being Donna Reed. Now, where did it go? Now, it, it was probably before that. I'll just let it play and then we'll see it. But the big poofy ones, like I got, again, I got those from Amazon as well. And then I ordered the little can-can slip to wear underneath it. And, um, but there it is right there. But it is so poofy and it's a lot of fun to wear. And when I put it on, I do kind of spin around and carry on. And then here was another one with the crinoline underneath it. And you can see how how broad the skirt is. This one, I got a JCPenney and they have a, a nice collection of dresses for women. So, all right, let me stop sharing that and come on back over here to StreamYard. So, Tommy, that's the answer to your question. So most of them I got from Amazon. And the big thing here is that what you have to do is um, make sure that you measure yourself well before you order them. Now, let me go over here to comments and see what you guys are saying over here now. Let's see. Now, Cal is laughing. She's saying she'd be lucky if she got a whistle. And, you know, when I was much younger, of course, most women got a whistle. You know, men would go or something like that. I can't whistle. But um, particularly if there was a construction site and a woman walked by, the guys would stop and whistle, give all kind of cat calls and things like that. 
which, you know, is a form of harassment, but that was what happened back then. They don't do that now, but, you know, that used to happen and that kind of thing. It, and it, it could be annoying, but, but, but yeah, but, but like I was saying, Cal, I'm not a spring chicken, so I wouldn't expect to get that today. Um, so Bradford Holmes says she likes to, to go to thrift stores for dresses to wear in the garden. And you know, I have seen some videos that have some really pretty garden dresses. But when they talk about garden dresses, they're talking about dresses where you're gonna like go to tea in the garden or sit there in the garden, drink lemonade and iced tea and just be pretty, but not actually be working. So those dresses that I showed you, those ones that I had four and in a different color, those are the dresses I might wear out in the garden if I'm working. And even that little mint green dress, most of those I wear out in the garden now. The black and white houndstooth dress, the uh, blue, when they have the blue top and the floor bottom, I don't wear those dresses in the garden. I wear the ones that are much more serviceable in the garden, like the like the one that I had the four in the one in the one color. And yes, I do like Peter Pan collars. Oh, and backing up for a second, Bradford Holmes, what is your name? I've forgotten, but tell us your name. We like to call each other by names there. But yes, I like Peter Pan collars too, Cheryl. I do like a Peter Pan collar. And no problem. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bradford Home. Again, tell us your name. <laughs> Leanne is with us as well. So Khadija says the more modest she dresses, the more respectful she gets treated. It's good that you don't that is, you know, you don't get hit on very much. And, you know, if you're young and attractive, you're probably going to get hit on regardless if you're young and attractive. Um, I feel like I'm old and attractive. I wouldn't expect that like now. Um, but the more modest you dress, the different kinds of attention you may get. I'll, I'll put it that way. So now Kel says she likes um, her dress is to come to her knees because she's short. And yeah, one of my sisters has that issue. She's very short. So it's hard for her to get a dress that is at a good length. So, you know, she can buy a dress that, you know, I'm complaining because the dress is at my knees, but to her, it's like mid calf, that kind of thing. Oh, Bradford home is Ann. All right. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Ann. I had a very spicy lunch. So sorry about that. All right. Let's get back over to a few of the questions that you guys. Oh, wait a minute. I got to get that off. Okay, so let's see. So um, Angie Poole says she loved the video and she always wears dresses or skirts and she's very, they're very comfortable, very modest. And she's thanking me for promoting modesty. Well, I wasn't really trying to promote modesty. I was just trying to share what I was doing and how and why I was doing it. And then I was just trying to be more presentable. And my husband likes it when I wear dresses because, you know, he, he likes, he always said I had pretty legs and he likes seeing my legs. He likes though me to wear a dress better than when I'm wearing jeans or whatever, but he likes those as well. It's not like he prefers only like one kind, but I do notice when I do wear a dress, he'll be like, well, you look really nice today or, or something like that. So I do get different kinds of compliments from him depending upon what I'm wearing. But um, why did I start wearing dresses more? And it's really kind of interesting because one of the YouTubers that I follow is inspired by Nikki and she's been wearing dresses for the last year. And I always thought, oh, those dresses are so pretty. And I've always liked dresses, but I didn't always have a lot of them or... I would save them for special occasions. So now I'm like, especially during COVID, I'm like, what am I saving them for? We can't go anywhere. I might as well wear them. So I started wearing them during the shutdown and discovered that I liked it. And I discovered how comfortable they were, especially since I gained that COVID-20. You know, a lot of people gained all that weight during COVID because you couldn't go anywhere. My jeans and other things were starting to be a little bit too small and you couldn't really go out and get anything or try anything on and or order it online and have to send it back and all of that. So that's part of the reason why I started wearing dresses more. So I was kind of slowly getting there, but it was a lot of fun to kind of wear the ones that I had. Um, 
So then, um, oh, I cut the name off. I am so sorry. Um, this person said, I really love this video. I wear dresses all the time. They make her feel more feminine, more modest, and more put together. And you guys know femininity is a thing right now. There's like a whole thing on YouTube and in life where women are being more feminine and they're talking about that. You know, so I just thought that was interesting that she brings that out there. But I do feel more feminine when I wear dresses. And I do feel more put together. And uh, there's a couple of questions I'm going to come to in a minute, but I, I just thought was kind of interesting. Uh, but this lady, and I'm sorry I cut off her name. She says that she found a style that she really likes on Amazon and she just rotates through them. And that was what I did when I found the um, the uh, red dress and the blue dress with the, you know, the solid blue top and the floor bottom. And I like them and they fit. Then I went back to the same vendor and then I ordered a couple more, but in a different color or a different pattern. And it worked out that way. But that tape measure is very important so that you're getting a good fit. Heather Smedley says, unless a dress now, this I thought was interesting and I didn't quite agree with it. She said, unless a dress is ankle length, bending is, is an immodest act and properly fitting pants are much more modest. Well, it was because of the pants, which all of my pants that I wear on video are properly fitting, that I was getting the comments. You know, you bend over and they can get a good view of your butt or whatever. And that was my concern. Whereas... If I'm wearing a dress that's mid-calf, and I got that comment from someone else that was asking a question about that, but if I'm wearing a dress that's mid-calf, if I bend over, all you're seeing is the bottom of my legs, which you can see anyway. So I don't feel that um, bending over is a modest act if I'm wearing a properly length dress, which to me is mid-calf. But then again, I'm not going to completely bend over and have my behind like stuck straight up in the air, that kind of thing. I'm always conscientious about that. Or if there's something that I've dropped and I need to pick it up, then maybe I'll squat down or stoop down to pick it up rather than bend over. It just kind of depends. But depending upon the length of the dress, bending over can work, you know, if you've got one that's a good, uh, a good length. So this is another friend of mine, A Cozy Lifestyle with Clarissa Howard. And she says she just can't get into cleaning in a dress but she's willing to give it a try. And Clarissa was not the only one that made that comment. I got a comment from Deanna who said, I can't imagine cleaning, cooking, and taking care of my home in a dress and pearls. And I thought, well, I might not have been cooking and cleaning in a dress and pearls two years ago. But it's the transition that I have made when I was younger and working outside of the home and, you know, you and I wore scrubs and uniforms to work. And so you work all day, you get home or you work all day, pick up the kids, get home, got to cook, clean, do whatever. You know, I didn't focus as much on what I was wearing in the home then as I am able to do now. Um, you guys have to realize that I'm in a different season than some of you. Are. And one of the things that um, my mentor, Sean Kennel, says is that don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. I'm in the middle. So I've made a transition to where I wear dresses more because I find they are comfortable. I've had a few people, a few YouTubers that I like, like Inspired by Nikki, and I, I love her dresses, but she's tall and slim and all of that. So the kind of style she wears is not necessarily suitable for me. And I also like the daily kind of sewer, you know, she always talks about being presentable and uh, she's so funny with that sometimes, but I, I like her approach as well. So I have just kind of gradually, you know, just kind of just started wearing dresses more and that's why. Um, and then on the same line as, as Deanna, um, Shaniqua Denise says I she doesn't see herself wearing her dresses to cook and clean because she said she's messy and she would mess them up. And I replied to her that that's why I wear an apron. And then one of my other uh, subscribers, Chris Turrigler, says she's enjoyed wearing dresses for a long time. And of course, an apron. And then she ordered an apron from me and Mary Cleveland and a couple of you other guys have ordered aprons as well. 
And she said the red checkered one that she ordered is her favorite. But it's like you put on your dress and then you put on your apron to start doing whatever work you're doing. If you're just sitting around the house talking, you're sitting at the table having a meal, you don't have your apron on. But you walk over to the sink to start washing dishes. You walk over to the stove. You're going to start making a meal. You got some laundry maybe to do. You put on an apron. I'm putting on an apron when I'm hanging clothes on the line because then I got clothespins in the pocket sometimes. So that's when you would have them on. So I think I've got us through all of those. So, so like I said, like this lady said, she's into wearing dresses more often. They make her feel more feminine, modest, and put together. And then Shaniqua Denise says she'd be afraid of messing them up. And then Chris says, you know, wearing an apron. And then Deborah Parker says, I wear house dresses, but I never put much thought into the concept of the house dress like she did when she, when she would wear, or rather like she would what she was going to wear to work. Now she's spending more time trying to look as nice around the house as when she goes out of the house. So see, she's obviously in another season where she can begin to focus more on that. So again, the season that you're in is the season that you're in and it's okay. If you want to make a change to maybe starting to wear more dresses, you think, you know, I might kind of like that. Then just buy a simple inexpensive dress and wear it. Just decide, okay, every Monday I'm going to wear a dress. Let's see what happens. See if your family notices it. I know when I wear a dress, like when I since I wear them so much more now, when I go to the beauty shop, a lot of times I'll just wear a dress. And, you know, when you go, the well, at least at most of the salons, the salon that I go to, the ladies come, you have a certain day that you come, you come either every week or every two weeks. It's the same group of ladies that are there on your day because, you know, people have a schedule that they keep. And at first it was like, Denise has got a dress on. Like, where are you going? or something like that. And now it's like, oh, she always wears a dress. So it's like people get used to wherever you are, where you are. So there's that. All right, so now let me just see if I need to come over here. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over here to, com to comments before I get back to the other set of questions. All right. All right. I got lots of folks jumping on. So here's Michelle at My Everyday Wife Live. Hey, Michelle, glad you, you're you on with me tonight. And uh, take me to Tammy's house. Hey, Tammy, glad you're here as well. And um, guys, Bradford Home, um, she added her picture. She's a Southern gardener from Alabama. And I believe she said her name is Ann. I believe Bradford Home said her name is Ann. So ladies, say hello to Ann from Bradford Home. And then love my babies forever. Her name is Tam. So hey, Tam, good to have you with us as well. We've got two Tams. So we got Tammy's house. So there's also oh, Bradford Home, who is Ann, Tammy. She's uh, in Alabama too. And uh, oh, Lala's Adventure. Lala's from Alabama. We got Alabama in the house tonight. And then Fernie4243 says she found my channel yesterday. She really appreciates my channel. Oh, thank you. So, and Fernie says she always also wears dresses whenever she can. And guys, boom, that's the key word. And I'm going to type that in. Whenever I can. That's what I want you to think about. Whenever I can. I don't want you guys to feel like, so Miss Denise is trying to make everybody wear dresses all the time and turn us into 1950s housewives. No, that is not what I'm trying to do. Now, as for the 1950s housewife, you know, my mom was a 1950s housewife and I real well remember what she wore. I remember what my grandma wore. To me, when I'm being Donna Reed, when I'm pretending to be a 1950s housewife and I put on, you know, the big poofy dress with the big poofy skirt, it's a lot of fun. It's like playing Barbie. You get out your Barbie dolls and you get out all your little clothes and stuff, you your shoes and all of that. 
Well, some days I am being Donna Reed or I might be June Cleaver and I will get out my 1950s dress with the big poofy skirts or whatever the crinoline. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm telling you, when I do that, I will be like going like this, you know, sometimes with the dress on. And my husband will be like, you've got to be kidding. But it is fun. And so, but I'm not trying to say you need to do that. You need to do you. Now, am I encouraging you to give it a try? Sure, just buy one inexpensive dress and see what you think, you know. See if your guy likes it. See if your children notices a difference, that kind of thing. And of course, an apron is probably your best accessory because it helps to keep your dress clean. That kind of thing. So now let me go back up because I have missed a lot of comments. Oh, let me get that out there. Um, we are having fun tonight. We've really had a lot of fun the last few shows, I must say. So, Fernie, I'm glad that you found my channel. And I hope you come often. And uh, Lala's Adventure is saying hello. And I'm not sure who Miss Kelsey is. So, who is that, um, Tam? Yes, Khadija, bend your knees and not your back. That does help. And the one thing that I will say is that as you get older, it gets a little bit harder to bend your knees. So you have to practice. So one of the things that I do is I practice bending my knees and squatting every day. And Michelle, when I was making that um, last one box challenge, I don't know what I did, but I was crawling all around the floor and doing this and doing that. And one of my sisters was over and she says, girl, you better quit crawling around like that. You're going to hurt your knees. And typically I don't have any problem, but I was working on that one box video. I was working on that one and I was doing another video the same day in the kitchen. I don't know what I did to my knee, but my knee swole up like crazy the next day. I couldn't, not only could I not bend, I could barely squat. I could just barely, move. I had to go with doctor, go and I've been in physical therapy for the last three months, getting my knee back in shape. So, Khadija, you have to practice those squats. And you got to do it every day. Bend those knees, squat down to the ground. You guys see I do it on video when I'm out in the garden. Now, I used to just squat and not think about it. Now I have to think about it. But I make myself do it every day because if you don't practice those motions, then those joints become stiffer. So there's that. Uh. So is Simple Southern, uh, is your last name Kelsey? Because I know you're Stella, I mean Thelma, but Kelsey, okay. All right. So now Ann says, once you try wearing a dress and flitting around the home, it's hard to go back <laughs> to a scroungy t-shirt. Yeah. She says she's 51 now and she's finding a different style too. And and I am so glad you mentioned that. You said you're 51 now and finding a different style. Because when I was in my 20s and 30s, my standard uniform, once I got home from work and I took off those scrubs, or if I took off, you know, whatever I had to wear to work that day, lab coat and whatever, I put on a, a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. They were the most comfortable thing that I owned. But I began to want something a little different these past couple of years. But like I said, again, I'm in a different season now. So there's that. And so if you want to find a different style, look for one. It's OK. But you want to find something that suits you. And yes, Khadija says people think their dress will get dirty, but that's what the aprons are for so that they don't spoil your dress or you have dedicated dresses for dirty pads. Like I said, most of the dresses that I wear in the house, like I can cook or clean in them. But if I'm like, and when I started the garage cleanup, I had on one of my nicer dresses to start it, but I didn't expect to get very dusty or dirty that day. But the rest of the time, trust me, I had on a dress that was more serviceable because you do have to have dresses that are more serviceable. So Tam says the apron game. Yeah, you know what? The aprons are so nice because they just help you stay protected. So Khadija says materials have to be easy to clean. And yes, they do need to be easy to clean. You want your dresses to be something that you can throw in the washer. Or if you have to hand wash them, do that. I don't have anything that I hand wash. I just don't. I just I'm just not into that. 
but I don't want to have to be sending things to the dry cleaners. So I try to find things that are machine washable. Even if you have to wash them on the delicate cycle, you can put them in the machine and hang them out to dry. And then, yes, wear your apron for your dirty jobs. And Tammy says she's in a different season, too. And see, that's it. As we progress through life, which is what we're supposed to do, progress through life, because if you're not moving and progressing through, you're dead. So you've got to be moving along that life's continuum. And as you make those transitions, you might decide that you want to do or wear something a little different. And that's okay. <laughs> Mary Dreer said she ran to the store wearing an apron many years ago. Typically, I don't do that. I, I don't. I, I might have inadvertently done that, but I try to take them off before I leave the house. And I also take it off before I sit down to have dinner or a meal with my family. I don't wear an apron at the table. Yeah, and so Khadija says it's important to her to model for her daughter because she wants her daughter to embrace her femininity as well. So Michelle says she doesn't bend well. Michelle, you just have to practice. You just have to practice. And, you know, the, if you practice every day, the more you practice, that bending comes a little bit more, a little bit better and a little bit better. But you just can only do what you can do. Yeah. So Linda said she had abdominal surgery recently and the last thing she wanted was a waistband. So she digs out a casual summer dress and haven't looked back. Oh, Linda, did you see I used one of your comments earlier? Hopefully you noticed it that I had one of your comments in, in here. Or if it's, it's somewhere. Um, so Michelle's thinking about getting one of those reachers or those grabbers. Yes, you do want to get those. You can pick things up off the ground. And... Okay, so now at Lala's Adventure says she's worried about, if you're worried about your dress showing your unmentionables, she wears biker shorts under her dresses. And I'm coming to that in a minute. And then uh, Susie is asking where I got my dresses. And Susie, I mentioned just a little bit earlier, so you must have just jumped on. I got most of those dresses at Amazon. And I'm going to find the links to them and I'll put them in the description box to the this video and to the say yes to the dress video. I'll put the links in there. But there's one that I got at Macy's, one I got at JCPenney's, one I got at TJ Maxx. But most of them came from Amazon and uh, I, three or four of them are from the same vendor. So that that works out. OK, so now let me get this off. So, hey, Penny, good to have you here. Let's go back over here to see where we left off with our questions. Uh, so, hey, Linda, here was the question that I had put up from you, and I, you might have missed it, where I talked about where I found the dresses and um, Amazon, Walmart, JCPenney, and Target. And let's see. And then Angie said, she thanked me for promoting modesty. And I says, I wasn't really trying to promote modesty. I was just showing what I was doing and why. And let's see. We talked about the need for an apron. And because it helps you to stay clean. And now Deanna can't imagine cooking, cleaning, and taking care of her home and progressive pearls. And you know what? Like I said, Deanna, earlier I couldn't. But now it's like I get up. And when I get dressed and I immediately, I will either reach for these pearls or I will reach for these pearls. Or I've got a little gold pair of just like little small boyfriend hoops that I wear, but I have about three pair of earrings that I wear all the time. And I just put those on and I put on whatever dress I'm going to wear and I put on one of those pairs of earrings. I don't always put on the pearl necklace. It depends on what I'm doing. But I always put that on. But I, I've worn earrings since I got my ears pierced when I was a little girl. And so I automatically put on earrings every day. Today, I'm choosing to wear these. I used to wear hoops all the time, but now I'm wearing the pearls. And it's part of when I started being Donna Reed or being June Cleaver, I got into the habit of wearing the pearls. But remember, uh, I did talk to on one of my videos about June Cleaver and about why she wore her pearl necklace all the time. 
And she wore the pearl necklace because she had kind of a hollow or funny look, funny shadow on her neck. So they would put the pearls around her neck to camouflage it. And I thought that was the funniest thing. All right. So now there was questions about the biker shorts. So let's get to that. So this one is from Super Sonia. And she says she likes to wear dresses as well. She pairs hers with some sort of a legging. That way, if she's out at the grocery store and there's a little breeze, she, there's no chance of showing anything that she'd be uncomfortable showing. And then Chiga One says she loves dresses with pockets. I do too. I love those little hidden pockets in the dresses because I'm always looking for a tissue or if I'm out on the putting clothes on the line somewhere that I can tuck in a clothespin. So her question was, in the winter, do I wear stockings under the dresses and do I feel cold? In the fall, in the winter and early spring, I will wear stockings under the dresses. Now, the stockings that I typically wear are not like the little sheer stockings that you wear to church or if you're going out somewhere fancy. I've um, And I buy them at Target and they're like a number 20 or a number 50. Uh, which is the how sheer they are. I've got some that are flesh colored. Um, that's my flesh colored. And there is a number 20, I think it is. And so I put those on and, you know, either I'll look bare legged or that I've just got on a pair of nice hose. But they're pretty heavy. They're heavy enough that they add a little bit of body temperature or they add a little bit of warmth so that I'm not cold when I wear them. If it's like, fall and winter and it's cold outside, then I've got some heavier tights that are um, a, a number 50 that um, provide more warm, warmth. And they're brown. They're more of a chocolate or, or cocoa brown is what they're called. I've not been able to find the flesh tone that I prefer in the 50. And um, maybe I'll call my husband. Where is my cell phone? Well, I'm just unprepared. I didn't bring my cell phone up here, nor did I bring my iPad. I'm going to call him on the house phone. We'll see if he'll answer. And I'll ask him to go get those holes for me. And then I will um, I can show them to you. He's going to be like, why are you calling me? But yeah, I can show you those if he answers the phone. Hmm. He's not answering the phone. He could be out in the garage. He's always out there working on something. Hey, honey, I'm on the show. He's going, what? Can you come upstairs and get something for me, please? I can't leave the screen. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> He's like, what? Like, why are you calling me? So I'll ask him to go get those and I'll show you those stockings that I wear. And then if I can find a link for them, I can drop the link in there as well. But they're pretty nice and they're inexpensive. They're like less than $10 for a pair and they don't run easily, which is important too. Because if you're going to be putting on a pair of holes every day, you want some that you don't have to worry about running very easily. Hi, dear. Can you go in the bedroom and look in that drawer where I have my t-shirts and bring in those pantyhose that's in the drawer? I can't leave the screen. You'll see them. There's a bunch of packages. Did you see that look on his face? He was like, what? <laughs> Hopefully he'll be able to find them. But, you know, but, but that's what I wear. So I'll wear those holes. And then when it's really cold and, you know, I'm in Indiana, so we get like 10 below zero and we get snow in the whole nine yards. Then I have some fleece line tights that I can wear if I'm wearing a dress. Now, if it's that bad, I may choose not to wear a dress or skirt. Just depends upon where I'm going, that kind of thing. But the fleece line tights are very nice. And then uh, Catherine Torgerson also wanted to know for movement, do I need to wear a bike short or longer undergarment? Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, you're talking about modest. This man is so modest. So he had his face all tuned up like, I don't know, like, all right. 
So opaque tights, these are the brown kind that I'll get. And this is the 50, um, wait a minute. The 50 deniers, what it says, but they're nice weight to them, a very nice weight to them. And this is, it just says brown, but this one, I really like. This is the same brand, only it is the 20 denier. And it, this one is called Coco. And it's a really nice, um, like I said, a nice flesh tone. So when I go, and I can't always find the Coco in the 20. So if I go to Target, I'll try to remember to pick up a pair. So I try to pick up a bunch that I always have some. So I've got, and then I've also got, the um 20 in black so if i have on a black dress or a black skirt or something and i wanted to wear black tights with it then i will get those and then this is the fleece lined tights and they're pretty nice you know they're nice and heavy they're pretty nice so i'm all ready when winter comes but see look at there so there's that. So you guys saw me when I cleaned out my um, the drawers and I did the master bedroom closet and I put those um, holes in that drawer. So it worked out nicely. He could find them without any trouble. Ha ha. All right. Let's come over to comments and see. What's going on here? Uh, let's see. I think I spoke to Penny, so nice to have you on. And, and yeah, and you know, when you dress up at home, it does change your whole outlook and your whole attitude. I really feel completely different sometimes when I get up and I'm more presentable, as Jennifer Scott says, I put on a nice dress or whatever. It does make me feel very different. And uh, Buckeye Girl is, I forgot her name, just that quick. Melissa. She says she loves to wear dresses. So yeah, it's Melissa. Uh, okay. And Thelma is Simple Southern Reflections. I think I got rid of her, um, Bradford. I just, I was on the other thing, but Michelle, uh, you're one of my, uh, Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life, you're one of my moderators. So if you can help with that, uh, please do. Um, let's see. And then Miss Lovely, she says she's new to the channel and enjoys and greatly appreciates me. Oh, thank you. She wears dresses three to four times a week. She also wears earrings and lip gloss or lipstick. So I uh, will usually put on a face, particularly if I'm going to be doing video that day, but I'll usually put on like my makeup that kind of day. But some days if I don't, then I might just put on just a, a simple lipstick, that kind of thing. So, okay. So, and then while I'm gone, when I have, when I have the banners up, I can't see the comments. When I have the comments up, I can see what's in there. So if you guys, uh, Michelle, or um, if you guys see a troll that's in there, then, you know, get rid of them. All right, back over to the banner. Uh, so I don't wear biker shorts, but now as far as longer undergarments, I don't wear longer undergarments either. I don't wear like long johns or anything like that. However, I do wear slips under my dresses. I know you younger women are probably thinking, what's a slip? Because, you know, unless you learn about them, you just don't know much about them anymore. But I always wear a slip under my dress just because I'm used to that. And I think that, you know, like the, the length of the dress that I prefer is enough to protect my modesty. And also the one other thing, too, is that, you know, we learned how to sit. Because when we were in school, girls had to wear dresses and, or skirts all the time. And it wasn't until I was in high school that they began to let us wear an occasional pair of pants. So today's young girls, they don't know how to sit, meaning they don't know how to sit with a dress or skirt on because they don't wear them very often. 
So you just have to teach them how to sit properly when they're wearing a dress. My little granddaughters, my two little girls, they used to go to a preschool where one of the things that the um, head headmistress worked on and taught them at the preschool was how to sit in a skirt or a dress. And I went to one of their little uh, programs and all these little four-year-old girls, they were sitting there so nice. I'm going to back up for a second so you can see me. And they were all sitting there and either they had their, you know, they had their knees together and they made sure their dress was down over their knees or they had their ankles crossed. And they were perfect. And I'm like, I'm sitting here watching four year olds. They're sitting there so modestly with their knees together and their ankles crossed like little ladies. And I thought there's some grown women that could take lessons from these four year olds. But again, it was something that they were taught how to do. So one of the things that I think Khadija had asked about, like some of the different things we could talk about was what are some things that we need to teach young girls and young women is how to sit with a skirt and a dress. But it's not something you just know how to do if you are not taught. OK, so now there's that. Uh, oh, so Jeanette Lee says she believes she likes to wear a comfortable dress with pockets. And I like a dress with pockets, too. And this one doesn't have any. And I'm like, I keep looking for them, but this one doesn't have any. But I wanted something nice and light and flowy for summer. So this will work just fine for that. But she likes to wear maxi dresses when she goes out. And she gets so many compliments when she does, but she likes to have her hair done, maybe a little light makeup, her nails done, and then jewelry. And she said, always wear perfume. I will admit that I don't always remember the perfume. And I think when we were younger, my husband has always had a little trouble smelling. So he didn't notice the perfume. So I'd say, well, if he can't smell it, why bother? But then I learned that I'm wearing the perfume for me because I like that fragrance. And even if it's not perfume, if you have a lotion that has a pleasant smell to it, people will notice it. I remember one day I went over to my sister's and she said, oh, you smell good. I'm like, I don't have anything on. She said, you got on something? I said, well, it's just my lotion. But it was lotion that I wore all the time. And she came to associate that fragrance with me. So, so yeah, I don't get my nails done, though. I do get pedicures. I don't get manicures. Well, why not? Well, because I'm a nurse. And when I was a young nurse working, we couldn't get our nails done. You couldn't wear nail polish, I should say. You couldn't wear nail polish in the clinical setting because they found that one, the nurses that wore nail polish, well, they didn't want to wash their hands as, as quite as thoroughly as you should because they got this manicure they're trying to protect. And number two, if your nails were too long, bacteria and different things would grow underneath the, the nails. They were responsible for different infections in the clinical setting. So that's why most nurses had to have their nails kept cut short and no polish, that kind of thing. Well, I just kind of got into that mindset. So I just never got into the habit of wearing nail polish. So I don't like the feel of it on my nails. So I don't like to, I don't like to get manicures but love a good pedicure. And then, of course, you know, my jewelry and um, I like makeup. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to come back over here to the comments for a second. Ha ha. Tammy says, I'm so much fun. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. Okay, well, Todd says he likes my content and the new live. So thank you, Todd. Glad you like that. And uh, Lala said she, let's see. Okay, so Ann and Lala are talking to one another. Yes, home ec is gone from the classrooms. Uh, I'm going to come back over here to the banners then and... So um, now this comment was from Sharon Latour and she said she's never seen me in a dress in a way that would be immodest. And I really don't think I have, at least not that you guys would have seen. And um, she doesn't see anything wrong in wearing a pair of blue jeans or slacks in the video. And I don't either. I don't see anything wrong with wearing a pair of jeans or slacks in a video anymore. I, I, you know, I have done that in the past. But I think part of my problem now is that I'm a little bit uh, heavier 
than I was at one time. So those slacks and blue jeans don't look quite as nice as they might have looked like three or four years ago. So that's part of the reason probably why I prefer dresses more because, you know, they camouflage quite a bit. So there's that. But thank you, Sharon. I appreciate that. Because I try not to be immodest. I'm always conscientious of the example that I set for my young homemakers that are out there. That's why I am saying I am not saying you have to wear dresses to be a good homemaker. I am not. I am just saying that I have been making a transition because I'm at a different point in my life and I have more time to focus on that. Now, I'm a much better wife today than I was, say, five years ago or and a definitely a better wife than I was 10 years ago because I have more time to focus on being a wife. I'm not being torn or pulled in so many directions. I can just focus on the house and him. So there's that. OK, so that's a whole different story. So I don't think I want to put that on yet. OK, so I'm going to come over here to comments and then we're going to transition to another topic. So Darcy is with us. She just joined us. So, hey, Darcy, it's good to have you with us. Always nice. So now, guys, we're going to move on to another video that um, got quite a few comments. And I'm going to um, let you see real quick just what that video was. And then we'll I'll show you a few of the comments from that one. And it had to do with um, the traditional homemaker live Q&A show where we had Karen from This Mainer Mom on. That was such a a fun show. If you guys are not familiar with Karen at This Made Her Mom, please check her out. You will really enjoy her channel. And she has been on a cleaning and decluttering marathon. This woman is a maniac right now trying to get that house decluttered. And I'm going to follow her example when I get back from vacation. Speaking of which, guys, I'm not going to be on live next Thursday because I'm going to be gone on vacation. So I'm really rushing trying to get all of my Christmas and July stuff done before I leave. So, but this is Karen from um, that ma that Mainer mom. So I'm gonna stop sharing that and come on back over here. Nope, excuse me. And so now the new question that I wanted to start with was, we were talking about, um, decluttering. And on that particular video, um, Karen said that your house doesn't get completely filled with clutter because you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons and not staying on top of the clutter. But it's because life happens. Things get in the way. You end up having to care for people or for yourself or for other things or for other reasons. And that's why your house can get into the mess that it does. And Michelle really liked it when Karen said that. And I did too, because it just brought out to everyone that we might have a messy house and it's not because we don't want a clean house, but it could be because life gets in the way. I know when I was a young wife and mother, my house was not the neatest. First of all, I didn't have routines in place to help me keep things sorted out. And two, busy. Today's families are so busy. And I thought we were busy then. Today's families seem to be even busier. But kids are so scheduled. But, you know, I'd come home from work and then I'd have work to do after work related to preparing for the lessons or whatever I had to teach. Also, kids had stuff to do, you know, either after school sports or clubs homework and then picking kids up and driving them here and there and all of that. So, you know, life happens and you have to learn to roll with it. But putting routines in place can really help you manage some of that clutter. So there was that. And then Gabrielle Velez, um, and I really liked her comment. She said she's 21 and she aspires to be a traditional homemaker someday. And so she's grateful for the insights. And I really felt like Karen gave a lot of insights. She's a traditional homemaker. She's in her early 50s now. So she's got six children, the oldest of which is 28 and married with his own family the youngest of which is 14. So she's kind of you know, been through the different little life stages and growth stages of kids. 
And um, so she talked all about that and what it was like and shared some insights. And it was really, really a nice conversation. I mean, I really enjoyed talking with her. She had a lot to share. Yeah, she really had a lot to share. And so Gabrielle says she's looking forward to being a homemaker when she, you know, when when she's married and when, when she has that time. Now, this comment came from Mimsy Whimsy. And Mimsy, we we talked about kids that were picky eaters and um, how you manage that. And I talked about my old school method and that kind of thing. And Karen said uh, she talked about what she did, but many households had like a three bite, three bite rule. You have to take three bites of something before you could say you didn't like it. And Mimsy said, even if they didn't, even if they've had it before, they still had to take three bites of it. And she said, Hominy had a very bad taste in her mouth. She said, actually, Hominy, well, she just said Hominy had a very bad taste in her mouth. You can find a comment in the uh, comment section on that video. But she said it wasn't until she was an adult that she found out that her dad, who loved Hominy, that it didn't taste like that to him. But it had this bad taste in her mouth every time she had it when she was a child. So, you know, I always had the three bite rule too. It's like you have to take three bites before you can say you could, you didn't like it. Or I think um, Karen called them a, a no thank you bite. You have to have take two or three no thank you bites, that kind of thing. And as we pointed out that with children, a lot of times it's a matter of texture with some foods, particularly if they are introduced to a new texture. It could be smooth. It could be gritty. Um, but a lot of kids have a problem with texture. And so sometimes they have to be introduced to it a few times before they can become accustomed to that texture. Now, me, I don't care for the taste of fish. Never have. When I was a kid, our parents cooked fish and we had to eat it because they were old school parents and you ate what was on the table. We had fish for dinner. I ate fish, but I didn't like it because it tasted fishy. And so now that I have my own home, we have fish for dinner. I have something else because it tastes fishy. And my husband's like, that doesn't make sense. It's supposed to taste fishy. I'm like, but that's why I don't like it because it tastes fishy. I don't like the taste of fish. I've had enough of the no thank you bites when I ate the whole thing with that. But most other things I'm pretty comfortable with. So there was that. So now let's see what comments we have about those. Thank you, Penny. I will. Yes, y'all, please hit the like button. I'd appreciate that if you would. Oh, so Hannah, thank you. She says she's recently become a homemaker after working for years. And she's been watching my videos as she powers through so many messes in her home that have lingered. So see, that's the thing. You get to a different place in your life and you can begin to focus on the things that you've not been able to pay attention to. So thank you, Hannah. I appreciate that. So Penny says texture for her grandson. He doesn't like fried chicken. He says it's too hard. I get it. I get it. Some people don't like cream of wheat because they don't like the texture of that. Um, I didn't like okra when I was a kid because I didn't like the texture of that. It was just too slimy. But I like it breaded and deep fried now, that kind of thing. So, yeah, some of those things do make a difference. So, um. And Penny says that she appreciates the fact that I'm trying to be an example for young women. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I started this channel. Well, actually, I started this channel to talk about a bunch of different things and just to have fun. And I am having fun. But I real I believe now, though, that one of the things that I am called to do on this channel is to be an example and to share my knowledge of homemaking with the young homemakers. That's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy nourishing and mentoring young women. So I enjoy doing that. So that's what I try to do. And I try to keep it real. And I try to, um, well, just kind of be the example that I would want to be for my own daughter or something like that. Okay. 
Uh, I'm not going to be on uh, Thursday. I'm going to um, I'm going to have my Christmas in July videos up. I've got the one for this Saturday ready to go. The one for the next Saturday, I have to finish editing tomorrow to get that up. And then I'll do a live stream on the Sunday that I get back to kind of wrap up the Christmas in July segment because there was just no way I could get it all done. I was just like Christmas in July felt right in the middle of my vacation, but it was like. I couldn't like change the month of Christmas in July. So that's where we are. So raw okra is delicious. Oh, I don't know about that. I'll have to give that a try. Okay, let's come back to the banners. So anyway, we were just the last video we were looking at was the one with Karen from That Made Her Mom. And like I said, that was a great show. We had lots of engagement. The, the ladies seemed to really enjoy it. So now the next video that I want us to touch on was um, the one where I was doing the 15 minute decluttering. So let me just show you this one real quick. Oh, wait. I have to keep remembering if you guys know, if I don't talk myself through it, I mess it up. So I have to share the screen to get there. But um, this video got a lot of comments as well. And this is the one where I was doing a 15 minute decluttering. I would like to get rid of at least 50% of the stuff that's here in my house. And I thought I would start with these three cabinets. So I got a timer set. And we'll see what happens. I've got nine sets of dishes in here. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing that and come on back over here. And I tell you what, that video has generated quite a few comments. And the biggest thing, as, as I mentioned in that video, is that, you know, first of all, when I said I had nine sets of dishes in that pantry, in that cabinet, that's my everyday cabinet, people were like, what? I like pretty dishes. I, what can I say? But that was so hard to do that decluttering. And the fact that we had to do it in 15 minutes, though, was so helpful. So, um, Nourishing Minimalism, who was Rachel from Nourishing Minimalism, and remember, she was on about three weeks ago, and she really did a good Q&A with us in talking about minimalism. She was on the week before Karen was. She laughed. She said, you let go of a lot of stuff. But she laughed when I put back that little measuring glass. And that was like one I had taken out, looked at it, and put it in the decluttering pile. And then I went and got it and took it out of the pile and put it back in the cabinet because it fits right down into another measuring cup that I had. Now, that's a big no-no. First of all, you know, once you put it in the pile, it should stay there. And why didn't it stay there? Well, because, first of all, I could still see it. So the experts say put the things in a box right away so that you don't have to touch them again. Because if you touch them again, then you're more likely to feel it, see it, think, oh, you know what? Maybe I need to keep this after all. And after I set it down and then I thought, oh, I'm like, oh, you know, I sometimes use this when I want to do, you know, so I sometimes use this when I want to pour a certain amount of so-and-so into the washer. I, th I could keep this. And then I was able to, I had a, a measuring cup that I kept in another cabinet. So I was able to like sit it down inside like that. So I thought, well, it's not taking up too much room. I can keep that. So I put it back in the cabinet. And so she laughed at that. And um, one of the other comments that I made on the video was I had mentioned how I was talking to my sister and how hard it was. And she said, well, Nisi, maybe you're not ready 
to do this. And I said, I'm never going to be ready. I just have to get started. And Michelle was saying she likes the fact that I said that because that is so true. We just have to get started because you're never going to be ready to declutter or get rid of a lifetime full of stuff because it's going to be so hard to do. And it's just easier, as she's, Michelle says here, to practice. The more she practices decluttering, she builds that decluttering muscle. And I've had to kind of paraphrase some of these comments because I can only get 200 characters in the box. But that is so true because, you know, and Darcy, who was on here at Organized by Darcy, she and I have been talking and we both have more than 40 years of marriage and 40 years of housekeeping that we've got. And even if I just sit around and look in here of all the stuff that we've that I've got in here, it's like, well, what's going to happen? Who's going to have to clear all this stuff out when the inevitable happens? And what I do know is my kids don't want my stuff. They got their own stuff. And I watched Dawn at the Minimal Mom quite a bit, and she would always use the word stuff. And I'd say, well, why does she always say stuff? stuff. Because I remember one English teacher that I had when I was in high school, there were certain words you couldn't use in a, in a, a, a thesis or in a paper. You couldn't use the word things at all. She said things said nothing and meant nothing. And you could not use the word things in a paper. You had to find an alternative word to put in there. And I thought about the word stuff like things. It's like, there's got to be a better word. But after watching her videos, and then I started decluttering my own home, I realized it's stuff. That's just what it is. Stuff applies to it appropriately because there's just so much of it. And it's just stuff that you just need to get rid of. So, yeah, it's stuff that just needs to kind of come out. And so Michelle made that comment. And Michelle, I so agree with you. And then Khadija at her healthy home says that so many pretty dishes for others to enjoy a bit more than I've been able to lately. And that's exactly right. And lots of room for the things that I do need more in my life. And I find that there were things that I couldn't put in the cabinet that I just had sitting somewhere thinking I've got to find somewhere to put these. Well, now that I got rid of some of those other things, I've got room for the things that I do enjoy, like some of the, the jars that I need for my um chicken broth or bone broth that I make. Well, now I've got a place to put those items. So I was glad to do that. And then uh, Jaylen8934 says she appreciated seeing my process. She felt like it was good to be able to see me look at this these dishes and then think, okay, so what do I use these for? Why do I need these? That kind of thing. And she felt like it was realistic watching me struggle with the thought process because so many people make comments similar to the fact that they feel like on some of the decluttering videos they watch that it's just very easy to do, very mindless. And one of the things that we know is that it is not easy, particularly if there are memories attached to the items. And I like how she pointed out that we have so many memories attached to dishware because the dishware is centered around food, around the table, around the gathering of families. So she felt like watching me think it through was helpful to her. And then <laughs> Miriam Delgado laughed too because she laughed. She saw me put that small measuring cup back in with the rest. And it just let her know that it is hard to declutter your cabinets. But when you see more that you have more space, I should be able to enjoy it more in the long run. And I have been enjoying those cabinets more. I, sometimes I'll just open the doors and just look in and just think, oh, this looks so nice. And there's just not so much stuff in there. And my husband and I took the things to uh, the donation center, and uh, I'm sure there'll be people that will enjoy using those things. And the other thing, too, that I mentioned that I forgot to mention from Khadija's comment when she said that others can enjoy a bit more than I've been lately. Well, you know, when we had the shutdown, 
there was no Thanksgiving dinner here. There was no Christmas dinner here. There was no big family gatherings that I normally would prepare for. And I would use all, a whole different set of plates and dishes that I use for those things. So I've got all those in the dining room, but they're still in there. And one of the things that I used to do every year is have a go red dinner, which for me, the go red dinner is like my celebration of life. I'm a heart disease survivor. And so every year, the week of Go Red or National Wear Red uh, Day, which is that first Friday in February, that weekend, typically I'll have a Go Red dinner. And the first two or three years I would have the dinner, I would invite anywhere from 10 to 20 people over. I would do my Go Red spiel where I would talk about women's heart health and all that kind of stuff. And then we'd have a meal, which I would make myself. And then the last year that I had the, the dinner before the shutdown, I hadn't been feeling very well. So my husband says, you are not preparing that dinner. We are going to go out to eat. And I'm like, but we can't invite everybody if we go out to eat. He says, no, we're going to invite six people. So he allowed me to invite six people. We went to a restaurant and we just paid for the meal for the two of us and the six people. It was so nice and it was so easy. The waiter brought out the menu. They set the table. They took everything away. It was like so easy. And I was like, we should do this every year. So I probably won't be having a big go red dinner here at the house. Or if I do, I have to get somebody else that can come in that can cook all that stuff. Because I'm just not up to doing all that. Not that much anymore. So all those dishes that I've been saving for all those occasions, I'm not doing as often. So, and then um, Jay Lynn, who mentioned, you know, we've got memories attached to those, which we do. Um, so one of the comments, and I'm not sure, oh, here it is. So Elisa Fluger said one thing that is helpful is that she can always either rent or thrift and then redonate if she's got a big hosting event. And she can do that rather than use a lot of single use items that you have to buy and discard. I don't know. Buying some single use items may work out. My niece has a beautiful party two or three times a year where she invites a lot of family over. She's got some beautiful like little plastic monogram plates that she uses and then she's able to discard them. But I like the idea of renting and then you don't have to, to keep track of it. So that's something that I'm thinking about when it's time to do my go red dinner this year. It's like, well, how are we going to handle that? And this is the year that everybody's going to come for Christmas. At least I hope so. That's the plan. But with COVID on the rise in certain states, who knows what may happen. But right now, the plan is this is the year that everybody should come for Christmas. So we'll see. But I did like that idea of renting items for that. And then um, one person, Callie L, was curious as to what I meant when I said the items were going into quarantine. And I'll show you what I mean if I can just, well, if I could just find it real quick. Well, no, I won't go look for it. So in the video, when I put all the dishes and things on the table, I say, these are going straight to the donation center and these items are going into quarantine. And then if I can do without them, then I'll go ahead and donate them. So what is quarantine? Quarantine is when I put them in a box and put them in the attic or put them in the garage, but I put them away out of my sight in a box for about a month. If I can go through a month and I don't see them and I don't use them and I don't need them, well, then I can do without them. So then they can just go ahead and be donated and they're already in a box. So that's the key when you're decluttering those things that you're going to declutter, put them in a box right away. Have that box sitting right there on your counter. Have your black trash bag right there close by so that if it goes in the black trash bag because you're pitching it, you can't see what's in there. Your family can't see what's in there. So you're less likely to take it out. And the things you put in the box, if you don't touch it again, you're less likely to try to dig it out. So there's that. There. So those were all of the questions that I had pulled that you guys had asked or comments that you guys had left or that others had left 
there on um, on the videos. And it was really lots of fun reading through and looking at those. So let's back up to see what people are saying now. So Leanne wants to know, where are my favorite places to purchase dresses? I love going to Macy's. Macy's is my store. I love going to Macy's to shop, but I've not been able to do that a lot lately. And during the shutdown, I had to use Amazon. So it turned out Amazon is everybody's best friend. So I purchased quite a few dresses on Amazon. The only problem was shopping online. Those, if you get something that doesn't fit, then you've got to um, send it back and all that trouble. But my place where I get most of the things is Amazon. The second best place, Macy's. Love Macy's. Now, Penny said she liked the 15-minute declutter, and she's going to do that one. And you know, Penny, it really has been helpful. As I was working on my uh, purging my Christmas decor, I set my timer on my on my phone for 15 minutes, and it does help because it's, it speeds you up. It keeps you from spending so much time thinking about something. You don't get paralyzed by thinking because like, oh, I got 15 minutes to get through these two boxes. And so while you're conscious of that, you work a little bit faster. And Penny, I did see your note that you might start doing a Sunday live show. So I think that's a good move, Penny. I think it's a good move. And Misunderstood Garden said she liked the 15-minute uh, decluttering video. Guys, I have to say, it was a hard video to do. It really was. Uh, yep, you touch it again and you're more likely to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I started negotiating. I was like, well, I could do this or I could do that. Then, you know, yeah. So Leanne said she has her grandma's china and there's so much she doesn't know what to do with it all. Well, how much china do you have, Leanne? Do you have enough china to like feed, let's say, a set of six or set of 12? Most people would get like a set of 12 back in the, back in the day. So you might have that many. And, and I know you're probably like me thinking, I don't want to break it up because it's a set and I don't want to break it up, that kind of thing. You can get a book from the library or you can find like some kind of thing online to find out what to do with the different pieces. But you know what you should do if you've got the china, if you've got a china cabinet, get it organized in the china cabinet, you know, your dishes, the bowls, the cups, whatever. And on Sundays, when you have Sunday dinner, use it. Use it every week. Otherwise, it's just going to take up space and not do you any good. And then you can use it on Sunday dinner and say, you know what? Grandma used to use this and think about your grandma and the different little fun things that you did with her. And then your children will get to um, know her a little bit through you. And also you can teach them how to set a table and how to sit down and have like, you know, eat nicely and that kind of thing. Maybe on Sundays because, you know, Sunday dinners are pretty nice. All right. Um, so Kadita says it's unfair to leave behind things that cost family members. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Excuse me, guys. That's the other thing that Darcy and I have been talking about is just that we have all of this stuff and it's stuff and our kids don't want it. And I realized it so much when my mom died and I had to help Max clean out the house. There is just so much of it. And then some things you specifically left to different people. And there's other things you just kind of got. And it's like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? I got my own stuff. And then I thought, OK, I need to do something about this so that my kids don't have to come in and worry about all of that. And then they feel guilty if they don't want it. Like I've got a lot of nice Longenberger baskets, which I paid a lot of money for. They're very nice. My daughter does not care for Longenberger baskets. It's like she didn't she didn't want that stuff. So I'm trying to let my one sister who has a Poshmark business sell them through Poshmark. And yeah, Penny, you're right. You know, like I said, when we went to the restaurant, it was like, oh, this is so nice. I, I could have the company there. Now I had to have fewer people because, of course, we can't take 20 people out to dinner at a restaurant uh, and pay for everything. But we could do 
the six and it was it was nice so we'll probably do something similar so yes so penny said she also wondered what i meant by quarantine but yeah you put it in a box you put it in a closet you put it in the garage you put it out of sight out of mind and then if you can do do without it for 30 days or two months then it's time for it to go Hey, Rebecca, good to have you with us. How did your live show go tonight? I've been on, so I haven't been able to join you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, Melissa, if you've got four totes of those dishes, where are they? Are they in the garage? Are they in the basement? Where are they? If you've got four totes, are you using them? It's time to start parting with some of those if you can. It's hard. So Mary said she needs to do a 15 minute declutter in the office Her in, in her dad's old room. He was a pack rat of books. Mary, I get it. I got books all over the house. Books were hard for me to part with, but I did get rid of some. I did get rid of some. Yeah, Rebecca, get that china out on Sundays and make it special. We've got to recapture some of those family traditions and Sunday dinners used to be a thing in most families. Some people call it Sunday dinner. Some people call it Sunday lunch, but whatever. It's the big meal you have on Sunday. Typically, it was mostly after church. Not as many people go to church today, but they still had that meal around the same time. And just as a nice family fellowship time and have dinner with those special dishes. Take a nice coffee cup and make a planter for herbs in it. I don't think so, Cal. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you have uh, enjoyed the different videos and that you can find yourself getting busy while you're doing it. Yeah, a decluttered and tidy cabinet is a work of art. I thought your thumbnail was amazing. It was just so cute. Oh, a set of 16. It's a set of 16. Okay, so you've got a set of 16. So now you've got plenty to have those big dinners. And when the time comes that you're the one who's hosting Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter dinner, you've got plenty of plates to do it with. But what you probably could do is if you've got Half of it in the china cabinet. So if you've got half of it in the china cabinet, put the other half away uh, somewhere so that because you're, you're keeping it together. And then, like I said, use it on Sunday dinner. That's a really good way to, to do it. All right, guys, we have been on an hour and a half. We've covered all of my questions. So did you have any other questions real quick? Otherwise, it's going to be time for us to wrap this up. So let me just ask you guys, which one of the videos that we talked about was your favorite? So tell me in the chat box, which one of the videos did you enjoy most in the sets of questions? I kind of think the say yes to the dress was the one that really generated a lot of discussion. And some of the discussion was quite interesting. Um, and then, of course, the 15 minute declutter one was a lot of fun, too, just because I had so much angst trying to get rid of those items. But the conversation with Karen was just amazing. So it was just really nice. The last three shows I thought were just really great. And then, of course, Rachel from Nourishing Minimalism was also pretty good as well. So let me remind you to please don't forget to visit our sponsor, uh, apron diva pretty and practical we believe an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory and we're having a uh, free shipping for orders over 75 dollars for christmas in july and i'm also getting my christmas in july video i got the last one to finish up so mary said she liked yes to the house dress and you know i'm getting all kind of yes to the dress videos popping up on my feed now, they're doing like yes to the dress bridal gowns, which I love those as well. But and then Leanne liked the dress in the 15 minute decluttering one. She appreciated watching me go through the process. It was helpful. Mary says uh, she's trying to do the Sweetie's Dash Cleaning and it's not easy. I got that book. I got it on my Kindle, the uh, Swedish Death Cleaning. I'm going through it and I'm I got started. 
in that pantry, well, that kitchen cabinet. And well, I didn't get very far, but I'm working through that. And when I get back from vacation, me and my husband are going to really work hard at that. And you say part of the stuff was from your mom. Yeah, I got boxes of stuff that I got from my mom now. And it's downstairs in my living room in a corner. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with it? So some of it, when I went through the garage and I haven't, I don't have all the videos up from the great garage cleanup, but some of it uh, ended up being donated to this one um, thrift shop that I really like. And they really, I feel like treat items respectfully. And I can tell that a lot of the things that they get at this particular shop, people have brought there because a relative has been deceased. And so they brought their good things there. Their vintage shop is like going to Macy's. They've got their dishware and stuff set up so nice. It's just beautiful. And so I knew they would care for those things nicely. So I took my things over there. Whereas sometimes some of the other donation centers, you take a box and they just dump them in a big bin. I'm like, okay, I don't want that to happen to this stuff. So, yeah. So Penny liked the yes to the dress and the 15 minute declutter. And then uh, Melissa said there's a closet since she's moved in six years ago where there's a tote. Oh, if there's a tote in that closet that you haven't opened in six years, whatever's in it, you don't need it. Because if you did, you'd have it out. But yeah, that's what happens. People will move and they'll say, well, I'm going to open that later than never get around to it. So, yeah. Well, all right, guys, I have got to um, go. I've got to um, start packing for the weekend. And then also, well, I'm not going to do any editing tonight because I'm just too tired to do that. But I've got to get things packed. I've been working on laundry all week so that I have everything all set to go. So I don't have to do any laundry tonight or tomorrow now. I can just start putting things in a suitcase. Make sure I've got my SEO and everything done for my videos. And we'll go from there. So no show next Thursday because I'm going to be away, but hopefully I have my Christmas in July stuff done. Oh, thank you, Penny. You know, I appreciate that. This this one wasn't I didn't open it up as smoothly as I normally do, but this was fun. I did enjoy just chatting with you guys and just kind of sharing with you the different questions or comments that I had taken a look at. So good night, everybody. I will. Uh, see you guys on Saturday for my next episode of Christmas in July. Bye.